Hi everybody, uh, it's Kevin here, uh, your new pastor, which is crazy to actually verbalize. Uh, I wanted to send a greeting. We're not going to be able to see each other this weekend. Uh, there isn't church planned for this long weekend Sunday. And I've been here in the office, in the building since Tuesday, uh, working and doing a few things. I wanted to provide you with an update and just maybe put a face to uh, a, a name that you've seen in the newsletter, your bulletin, and uh, maybe uh, even voiced from the front of the church. Uh, so I've been here since Tuesday. I spent the day on Tuesday uh, working with Robbie and Heather and Aiden. We spent the day together uh, praying, visioning, uh, doing some team building activities, thinking about the church, thinking about who we are as a body of believers and who we desire to be as we go uh, out from here. And, uh, just what we can do as a pastoral staff, as a pastoral team, to be able to uh, support you and encourage you uh, and help you along your way of your faith journey. Uh, the rest of the week I've spent just getting oriented, uh, figuring out where things are in the office, uh, figuring out just where things are in the church, how things work, uh, processes and different things that way. Uh, I've got a computer now and I'm, I'm setting that up as well. And then of course making this video to be able to, to connect with you. Um, a couple of things, uh, like I said earlier, we're not meeting this Sunday. Uh, can I encourage you, if maybe you haven't uh, maybe been connecting with some of the, the Sunday morning worship services in the past few weeks, our Minor Prophets series continues. Uh, there's several uh, Minor Prophets Sundays in the past that maybe you can go back to and, and check out, take a look at, uh, or even maybe review if you've seen them all, just review uh, one of the two of those services on Sunday. Uh, can I also encourage you maybe to stop by the church next week? I'll be here Tuesday to Friday. Uh, I'll be here in the office. My hours vary to some degree. You'll know if I'm here by my bike outside. Uh, I'm, don't, I'm, I'm trying to bike to work in the mornings or during the day. And so uh, you may not see a car, but maybe look a little closer and see the bike that's out there and know that uh, I will be here if my bike is outside. Um, I've been thinking a lot lately about the ways of Jesus and practicing in the ways of Jesus and how as we practice the ways of Jesus, as we imitate Jesus, we move to become transformed. And I was thinking about that and that's, it's a tricky thing sometimes to think about uh, imitating Jesus. It can, think, it can be a big thing and sometimes we know we have Jesus and Jesus was here on this, in this world, but sometimes it, when we read the stories, when we read the Gospels, the stories are, are out there and over there and, the, and we're here and sometimes it feels like there can be a bit of a, a disconnect. We're called to imitate Jesus. I was reading this week from Luke 8 with our, our pastoral team uh, the story of uh, the Jairus, the synagogue leader who came to Jesus and pleaded with him to heal his, his dying daughter, to come to his home and heal his daughter. And Jesus does. He, he and his disciples make the move to go towards Jairus' home. And on the way, the crowds are pressing in and they're, t and, they're, and they're trying to move through the crowds. And somebody manages to kind of work through the crowd, a woman who has been suffering from a bleeding disorder. And there she touches Jesus' robe and Jesus feels the power going out from him and he turns around, he wheels around and asks, who touched my robe? And the disciples are saying, Jesus, there's so many people around. How can you possibly know who touched your robe? There's people everywhere. He says, no, power came out of me. And the woman, after she'd been found out, sheepishly came uh, to the front and front, presented herself in front of Jesus and was healed and, and said that, yes, Jesus, thank you for healing me. And Jesus said, uh, in his mercy, in his compassion, said, you are uh, free. And so then the disciples continued on, and, and, but they got word that Jairus' daughter had in fact passed away. And so when Jesus got there, he invited a select group of disciples into the space. And uh, people said, she's dead. There's nothing that you can do at this point. And they were basically mocking Jesus. And Jesus said, no, she's just merely sleeping. And he raised her from the dead, and the people were amazed. As I think about that story, I think about who I resonate with that story, in that story. I wonder who you resonate with in that story. Was it Jairus, the father, the desperate father? Was it the woman who was suffering from the disorder through much of her life? Was it the crowd pressing in, just trying to get a glimpse and a sense and a taste of Jesus? Or was it the disciples and the people in the room with Jesus when the girl was dead and were just 
in disbelief that Jesus had the power and the ability to uh, heal this girl? Or do you recognize and do you resonate with Jesus? There was a conference that happened uh, several years ago where there was a bunch of healers and teachers and people of faith, about seven, eight hundred people, and somebody presented this story and they asked, who do you recognize, who do you resonate with in this story? And only eight people out of a crowd of 700 faith leaders resonated or identified with Jesus. We are called to identify with Jesus. We are called to imitate Jesus. And sometimes that can feel like a big, hard thing to do because of all the things that Jesus did. We're not going to be Jesus. But in Jesus' death and his resurrection and his forgiveness of our sins, Jesus provides us with a way, a grace, a peace to be able to uh, live in the ways that Jesus lived. And I, I leave that with you as an encouragement. As you're going about your weekend, I encourage you to think about the ways that you resonate with Jesus, the ways that you can imitate Jesus, the ways that you can be Jesus to your family, to your community, to your friends. And as you do that, as you walk and practice in the ways of Jesus, that you might be transformed. Blessings for your long weekend. Peace be with you. I hope to see you next week.